Want to know the history of American rock band Hallelujah, Hallelujah the Hills? You've come to the right place, but the journey is long and full of ridiculous peril. Follow us and we'll guide you through the tales so that the magic of anthemic guitar-based rock and roll will certainly prevail. Hallelujah the Hills formed in late 2005, signed to Mizra Records in 2006, and released their debut in 2007, entitled Collective Psychosis Be Gone. They have toured with the Silver Jews, co-written a song with Triumph the Insult Comic Dog, collaborated with author Jonathan Latham, have been the house band for the Upright Citizens Brigade and have had a live performance interrupted by Chevy Chase. In 2009, the band released their second album, Colonial Drones, also on Misra Records. Upon the release of that album, they toured the United States in which they had the bad fortune of driving too close to Sierra Blanca, Texas, were ensnared by Border Patrol agents, and were momentarily incarcerated for approximately three marijuana cigarettes. Oh no, that poor band! Later, the band helped orchestrate and tour the Titus Andronicus album, The Monitor. Now without a label, the band crowdsourced the making of their third album, No One Knows what happens next, which has developed a strong following despite being trashed by Spin Magazine upon release. In the midst of a Halloween show in Boston, the band's drummer quit on stage during their set. Oh no, that poor band! A new drummer was found. Meanwhile, a song from Colonial Drones appeared in an ABC family show called Make It or Break It, in which the tune Classic Tapes was played in a small town pizza shop jukebox, which I think we can all agree is an unlikely scenario. The band debuted a new video on MTV Hive, and then recreated a scene from Twin Peaks shot for shot in yet another video, and then were menaced on a rooftop top by seagulls for a project for an NPR station. What happened next? We will tell you. Hallelujah the Hills performed at the site of the Boston Occupy movement around this time, later learning they were surveilled by Boston Regional Intelligence Center for the performance. In May 2013, the band released a collection of B-sides, non-album tracks, and rarities entitled Portrait of the Artist as a Young Trash Can. Next up, the band's second Kickstarter campaign centered around a series of confusing videos in which members of the band smashed, rebuilt, became trapped in, and set fire to a small miniature house. Recorded at 1809 Studios in Macedon, New York, the band made Have You Ever Done Something Evil in just five days in early 2014. Pop Matters declared the album the number one overlooked album of the year, calling it the band's masterstroke. The band won two Boston Music Awards for Evil, including Best Video for I Stand Corrected, in which the guys took viewers on a conference a tour of Boston's rock and roll landmarks, all of which were entirely fabricated by the band. Following the album's release, the band toured California. During a show in Oakland, the band's van was broken into and all of their personal belongings were stolen, as well as most of the copies of the new record. Due to perform at the wedding of two fans in 48 hours, the band recreated their lives from scratch at a Target in Pasadena in the span of 45 minutes. Later, they appeared on the Improv for Humans podcast, where an improviser created comedic scenes based on live performances of the band's songs. Okay, what's that mean? Wave backwards to Massachusetts. Um, have you ever, like, bounced off a rainbow into a small ocean and decided not to drown? <laughs> During a live version of the same concept, the band learned a lot about themselves and each other, as Zach Woods from The Office asked pressing questions about their past loves and worst mistakes. Have you guys ever been in a relationship where there's a power imbalance? <laughs> 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 Upon their return to the East Coast, the band filmed comedian James Adomian, improvising as a band manager pitching video ideas, and then filmed every single stupid idea he came up with for the Try This Instead video. Once the video wrapped, a shitload of pitchforks were returned to Home Depot. Revinyl recently pressed a limited edition 180 gram vinyl release of Have You Ever Done Something Evil, which features a functioning Ouija board on the back sleeve, planchette not included. Uh, 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 uh. Hallelujah the Hills! Uh, hallelujah is the part that I'm having trouble with. The Hills? I got no problem with, man. And by the way, Kelly Halloween has got merch at the table. A young man's asked if he can sing a little beatbox after they're finished. I said, what the hell? Hallelujah, The Hills will solve the Kennedy assassination. So now that you know, what will you do? We hope that you'll become a fan and to Hallelujah the Hills, stay true. Next up, packing healthy light lunches for long airplane rides.